everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sheriff, and I'm so excited today to be able to show you and introduce you to my portrait set. Now, this is part of my Art Sherpa brush collection that I did in partnership with Silver Brush Limited, and I'm really thrilled to be able to offer it to you because it includes brushes that lend themselves to particular type of painting techniques often seen in portraits. And if you've been doing the about face quest with me, you might have noticed some of these techniques and things going on, and also it contains a very special brush. But listen, in this video, I'm gonna show you what's in the package, what they do, some care and cleaning tips, and give you some brush stroke demos so you can understand why I might've put this brush set together the way that I did. Let's go to my weird in-studio pop-up store that, that I got built, isn't this kinda cute? This is like very similar to what you might see if you were out in the world and you saw some art sharp brushes and I'm kind of excited to have one in my studio, but I'm gonna go to this pop-up store and I'm gonna go shopping and get my portrait set. All right, let me do that. Ooh, shopping, so easy, there it is. So this is the portrait set. It's a little bit shiny in the package. And so to show it to you, I'm gonna take it out of the package and bring this to my palette cap. I'll see you there. So this here is the portrait set. And this is different than sometimes what if you've been painting with me for a while, this is actually filbert. Often we paint with the bright, but in this particular set, I have three filberts. I have an eight, I have a four, and I have a two, and I also have a long handle zero detail round. Now, you're gonna notice that the package says, you know, Silver Brush Limited, which is my partner, the R Sherpa. On the back, it's gonna tell you what's in the package. You're gonna notice that it's a woman-owned business, which I think is really cool. Information where you can find more tutorials. I'm gonna open this up. The painting on this particular package, I did custom for this. I actually painted this really cool face, custom for this package, and I'm really sort of proud of it. <laughs> With these brushes, interestingly enough. So I'm gonna pull this out. It's kind of got these like little sticky, double stickies and guides. If you need to clean this off, this comes off with just a little bit of rubbing alcohol and get that right off or goo be gone. I'm gonna pull these off and clean them up with some rubbing alcohol and meet you right back here. All right, so let's look at this number eight Filbert. This is the largest in the set. You've got the number four and you've got a number two and the zero. And this is actually really what you need to be able to do some of the blended portrait painting techniques. So what's wonderful about a Filbert, and I'm getting the sizing out of this, is that it's a little longer on the length out. So the black pearls are made for acrylic and oil. They have the Mitlon filament. So things you're gonna notice about the filbert is that it's rounded. Artists actually used to make these brushes for themselves and the length out from the ferrule to the tip is much longer and a bright. So this is gonna give you a little more bend, a little more spring to the brush and also the way the edge is done. Not only can you get a nice line and beautiful strokes, but you can get a lovely blend. bend, blend. So that's what I like about these, and when you're working portraits, it's just wonderful to be able to do all these soft edges. In acrylic painting, one of the things that we struggle for is very soft edges. We get great heart edges, but we have trouble getting soft edges. So I'm gonna get this brush wet. You're gonna see that even though it's longer out, it's not pulling a whole lake into the brush, and I'm gonna mix a little of my red and yellow heavy body paint. I'm gonna come over to my canvas, and I'm gonna show you how this paints out. So as I'm painting down, you're gonna see that it has more of a rounded, soft stroke, right? And also I wanna show you what I can do with this. When I come up on the edge, look at how I can blend. This brush is really about creating, see how it's just going to have that round, round edge? It's never gonna give you that hard, hard edge, and that's what you want from these. Because when you're doing soft organic objects, it's very nice to have that option. And you can see that it's just real easy for me to blend two areas together, soften space between two, look, and just dust and soften, dust, dust, dust. Look at this area right here getting softer, softer, softer. 
softer, softer, softer. That's something that we want from these types of brushes. The other thing I want to show is I want to show the different types of strokes you can get. So I'm going to load up the yellow and the red so you can really see them together. So one of the things that you can get is, believe it or not, you can still get some beautiful edge lines with a filbert. In fact, this is really a wonderful brush that you can do hair with in other very soft objects because you can see it does that incredible ribboning. But we'll still do refined strokes. And then if you press hard and pull, you can see that it creates this type of strokes. You get the flat, the edge, and the corner out of this brush, not to mention on the tip these refined lines. So there's a lot going on on this brush, and if you needed to work a painting and have one brush in your hand, filberts are wonderful to go. You see a lot of oil artists use them, but the issue is, is some of the best oil paint brushes are too soft for heavy body acrylic paint. But with the Mite Lawn filament, you actually get to enjoy yourself a bit of a filbert too. I want to show you the detail round, and then also some tips and care instructions for these. So these brushes last as long as possible for you. Now the other, this is the unique brush in this set that I have. I have a number zero round. And one of the things that can be super hard to find when you're a painter, especially an acrylic painter, is a brush that's a detail that has authority that can really handle acrylic paint and hold up. So I'm going to get this brush wet. And one of the things that you're going to notice is this is actually a fairly firm detail. I'm going to get the brush tip loaded up and I'm going to show you the nice lines that you can get in this. So this brush lets you, you can paint from your far back positioning if that's your preference, right? You can paint from your up close positioning if that's your preference. And you can get many, 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 many soft, detailed, expressive lines. I mean, almost like they're clouds, right? They're just, just, just little breaths of air. Look at that. Just, just little hairs, little expressions of hairs. And this is important for you as an artist, especially if you're starting out. You know, some of what happens in your line, if I press down, you can see my line gets thicker, and if I pull up, it gets thinner, and I press down, it gets thicker, and pulls up. This is a nice way to get like a little petal stroke. Um, one of the things that happens when you're new is it's very hard to control your pressure, right? And you have a tendency to over kinetic into your brush and therefore have trouble getting good lines. But the stiffness of brushes for acrylic will sometimes convey to you so you can feel that you're pushing too hard. Now I'm going to rinse this out and I'm going to put this to the side and dry it and then I want to show you some care tips about these. And one thing I want to say before I show you some care tips is don't leave your brushes in jars of water. Look, it happens. I get that it happens. I'm certainly sort of the queen of doing it because like the kids will do something or I'll hit the dog or John will call me and I wander out of the studio and I forget that I have brushes and water. But having, having had that happen to me several times, I just want to tell you that the consequence of leaving brushes in jars of water a lot is that it cracks the wood on your brush and it does a bunch of damage. The brushes will still paint, but I'm just saying if you want them to stay pretty and pristine, it's best not to leave them in jars. And the other consequence of leaving those jars is it can cause the filaments to bend. So if you can avoid it, do. But listen, if you ever leave paint on your brush and let it dry or you've left it in a jar and it's had some trouble, definitely, definitely check the description below and the info card because I made a really goofy video on how to repair damaged brushes. I'm, I'm being honest here. It's goofy, but it's also very informative and it is how you can repair brushes even from crazy flayed hairs. All right, let's look at washing these brushes and how you can keep them living a very long time in your studio. So I have my two brushes that I painted with here and I have some clean water and some soap. And the other tool that I'm going to use for my filberts only, this is a perler bead board. This is like so you can make those weird little perler bead things. I get them for my kids and then I always keep the squares. You can also buy these individually. I like this because it's going to help me distribute the soap through the brush. So I'm going to get my brush wet, and you can see that even in the water there's just a hint of yellow pigment. And as I brush the soap through it, 
This is the master's brush cleaner. And I just like it because I have synthetic and natural brushes in my studio. And this brush soap works really well for both. And it's really good about getting acrylic paint out. I'm gonna work the paint through the brush. You can swirl it around on your hand. But my special thing that I like to do is take the pegboard and bring the brush through it. This is part of my brush spa routine. I have this thing I call the brush spa when I really, really take care of all my brushes and I'm just trying to get them back to condition. Sometimes because you see a bunch of paint on my handle, you might not know I actually am pretty into this little process. So I'm just making sure I'm pulling every bit of the acrylic paint out, out of the filament. I'm gonna rinse this out Make sure that the soap is all out of my brush, and but really importantly, the paint. I can brush this off on the paper towel, and that'll often tell me if I have a lot of pigment still in there. And now I'm gonna shape the brush with my fingers. I'm gonna just try to get it back into the original shape that it was in when I purchased it. And I'm gonna lay it flat. One thing that will really shorten the lifespan of your brush is to wash them and then dry them up because all of the residue is gonna get down into the ferrule, down into the wood, and create a bunch of problems. Now let me show you how you can do the detail brush because in this particular case, I have a very different washing procedure. In this case, I'm going to rinse it and get it wet, and I'm very gently going to bring this through the soap. I don't wanna be rough with these filaments. I don't wanna bend them. I don't want them to lose their shape in any way. And I'm just going to finger clean. I like to drag my nail softly across the brush trying to pull out any any acrylic paint that's in it rinse out again come in here rinse out again come in here i'm just trying to make sure the soap is really through there and you notice i'm not doing anything i don't swirl it around on my hand i'm not doing anything to interfere with the shape of this tool i treat it very delicately and then when it's rinsed out i'm going to shape this and lay this flat. Now, if I can do that for all of my brushes every time, they're gonna last a really, really long time. But don't beat yourself up over a mistake. I do it all the time, my friends do it. Everybody leaves a brush in water and ends up having to replace it, or everybody leaves a brush in paint. But remember, a lot of that stuff is repairable, so check that video. Listen, these are a great tool, and I'm so excited to be able to offer a portrait set for heavy bodied acrylic paints, I think it's gonna make those soft blended edges a lot of fun to achieve. But they're just tools, right? Brushes and paints and canvases, these are all tools. Tools are exchangeable, tools are replaceable. There's only one thing in your art kit that you can't live without to make art, and that's you, okay? So never feel pressured that you have to get something. It's just fun to share these fun options and these fun tools with you. Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I wanna see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.